folks. Today, I'd like to have a little chat. Quite often here at Tire Review HQ, we get emails and questions on YouTube and various other places saying, which all-terrain should I buy? And generally people are weighing up like, you know, one versus the other, or you know, this versus this one that's really aggressive versus this one that's less aggressive. But there's quite a lot of other things to consider when you're actually purchasing these tires. And so um, quite often it sort of comes down, back down to those basics, which then inform the tire choice. So it's not necessarily whichever one is sexy at the time, it's which one is going to be most appropriate for how you use the tire. So probably a, you know, key things to consider are comfort, the aggressiveness of the tire, how noisy it's going to be, what it's like in the wet, and also sort of part of comfort is the thickness of the sidewall, so if you, you know, which we can get into later on. Um, and then the other thing to think about is, is it a daily car? Are you driving this to and from work every day? And so are you gonna get really annoyed if it's a noisy tire? Or is it a dedicated uh, car that you're only gonna take out on the weekend? Then also, how much time do you spend off-road really? Like really, really? Like, do you feel like you're hardcore and you've got all the, the bits hanging off your car, but you actually go every six months. So perhaps a tire that has an aggressive sidewall, so you look aggressive, but actually has a really good, comfortable fa tread face might be the way for you. Or the other thing to think about is, what's your budget? Like, we strongly recommend name brand tires here, um, but even within those name brand tires, there is quite a variance in terms of budget. We won't go too deep into budget today because that's not what we're about. We're all about the tire, not the, you know, the budget. Um, but that's something to consider as well. So in terms of comfort, the thing to think about is you're driving this car, you might have, uh, say, a really nice Prado that actually has excellent coil suspension all around, which means that you might be able to give up a little bit of comfort in terms of being able to run more aggressive tyres that actually have a stronger sidewall. Um, whereas you might be in a dodgy trader ute that has leaf springs in the rear. And so going for a more comfortable all-terrain tyre that's still uh, going to be good for the occasional off-road trip might mean you're actually uh, more likely to like the tyre for a longer period of time. Because if you buy something that's really uncomfortable, then you're not going to like the tyre and it's just, you know, you're going to be off the island pretty quickly. And then aggressiveness as well. So this sort of ties back into the, the comfort of noise. It's almost like the, you know, it's almost like a, a, a diagram where you can sort of choose one or two of these things, but not all of them. And so a really aggressive tire is going to have a, a thicker sidewall, which means that it's going to be less comfortable, but it's less likely to get holes in it, less likely to get staked if you're going seriously aggressive off-roading. And part of all of this is how it performs in the wet as well. So uh, a less aggressive tread pattern with a stickier compound is actually going to be better in the wet, um, particularly in those, you know, again, the trader ute that has nothing in the back, then it might be more likely to pendulum around a roundabout and scare the, the living daylights out of your passengers, that sort of things, and perhaps yourself as well. And then finally, the other question we get quite regularly is what size should I choose? Should I go up a size? What's the difference between width and that sort of thing? We'll probably address that more in a different video. So we'll go more into um, the different types of AT tires that you can actually choose and what they look like and that sort of thing. So what I might do first is grab the Michelin LTX Force. This is probably the lightest duty all-terrain tire that we have here in the shop. And so you can see that this tire is really meant for SUV use. There's no reason why you couldn't put it on your Ranger or whatever, but it's something that's going to be good for going on gravel roads and you know, going up on grass curbs and that sort of thing. But you can see that it's a really conformable and comfortable tire that has quite a dense tread pattern on top. It has these um, four really good channels here for evacuating water and quite a, a sticky sort of compound. Not that that really actually tells you much, it's just... I don't mind doing that because it annoys the team. So yeah, this is uh, probably, if you're getting into the all-terrain world, this is not a bad place to start. Um, but there is probably lots of other considerations when it comes to choosing tyres. So that's your lightest. We'll stick that there. And then another one, like stepping it up another notch. You've got the Yokohama G015. So you can see here we've got more aggressive tread blocks, um, slightly more aggressive sidewall and slightly less flexy. 
um, but you still have those four serious grooves. So I like to sort of refer to this one as a more road-oriented all-terrain. So while it still may be sold as a 70% road, 30% off-road, it's, it's not as aggressive as some of the other ones. So that's sort of stepping it up a notch. There's a few others that sort of fit into the same uh, group as the Yokohama. So maybe we'll choose the Falcon Wild Peak next. So this one is the darling of the industry at the moment. So this one, I feel like they hit it right on the nose in terms of aggressiveness. The look, because that's probably actually a fairly serious consideration. And the traction versus the cost. And so these are a really affordable tyre that um, uh, fits, a lot, fits probably 80% of the bill for a lot of people. And so while they're still aggressive, they've still got a really solid tread face. There's you know, definitely some grooves here that I can fit my finger into. But they're also um, durable enough that they're going to put up with a bunch of good hard off-roading. Um, I was one of the first tyres that I officially tested for tyre review and um, they certainly set the bar for a long time. So this one, you sort of notice that we're starting to get away from the, the, the consistent channels going around the tyre and we're going to have more of these broken channels. So still good in the wet, although I did notice after about 10,000 k's with these ones that they did start to just pendulum a little bit. But that's sort of got to be expected when you're moving away from the tread patterns that are more comfort and traction oriented, and uh, on-road wet traction oriented. But there are some later on that are actually really good for that sort of thing. So now I'll show you the boss. So <coughs> this is the one by which all others are measured. This is the BF Goodrich all-terrain. Um, and this is sort of the one that uh, everybody looks to as a, as a reference point. And you'll see here that the tread blocks are a lot more widely spaced than what we're seeing on the Falcon. And again, there's no, none of these grooves running around the tread. Um, but there is a lot of space there, um, which means that again, it should be fine for you know, evacuating water and that sort of thing. But again, you're stepping up in that aggressiveness, so it's not gonna be quite as good in terms of wet weather traction. Um, but off-road, the more aggressive shoulders and that sort of thing will actually give you more benefit. So let's step up another notch. And so you can sort of see here, I've got the all-terrain tires and then I've got the aggressive all-terrain tires. And so probably the next up in terms of aggressiveness will be the Ridge Grappler or the Razor AT. So maybe I'll grab the Razor AT as a comparison. So you can see here, it's a heavier tyre. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. Uh, it's a heavier tyre with beefier sidewalls, bigger grooves, although um, you know, they're still relatively similar to what the BFG has. And the tread pattern is starting to get into this more aggressive blade sort of shape. Um, certainly the shoulders are wider space blocks than a lot of these. And the carcass itself is a lot tougher. So this is actually the first of the three ply sidewall tires that we're looking at. The rest of these have been two ply sidewalls, um, which means that you're less likely to get staked or um, punctures through the sidewall. And so there are, you know, if you're going for longer trips, you're less likely to want punctures, which nobody wants punctures, but it's all, again, it comes to that balance. Then starting off with a three ply sidewall tire is actually a good place. So then we can step it up another notch and we go to the to Toyo RT, which is certainly one of the more aggressive all terrains. And you can see here significant gaps in the shoulder blocks. And even the center blocks are actually less tightly spaced than you will see on, say, the Falcon or even the Maxxis Razor AT. So more widely spaced, more characteristics of a mud tire. So by, I haven't actually run these yet. Um, Chris ran these and was pretty happy with them on his all-wheel drive Land Cruiser but I'd be interested to try these on a, you know, a Ranger like mine that actually is lighter in the back and see what it does on the, on the pendulum test in the wet. But again, very solid build. Um, 
very aggressive tread pattern. So we're getting into the territory where these are still good for a dedicated commuter car, but they're not going to be as nice day to day as some of these other tyres. So then we'll step it up another notch, and this is the final notch for today, because you're probably sick of me. And then we'll go to the Mickey Thompson Baja Boss. Now this is a brand new tyre, and this is actually slightly bigger, because this is one that actually will go on my car. But you can see here that we've got really big gaps in the shoulder blocks, a really solid construction, and lots of gaps in the middle. Um, but it's interesting actually, I was thinking these were more aggressive than the RTs, but they're actually, in terms of their centre blocks, slightly less aggressive. But probably these and the RT are ones that you should consider as some of the most aggressive all-terrain tyres you can get before you go into a mud terrain tyre. That's really the full gamut of tyres that you can, can consider. And again, it comes down to that comfort versus aggr aggressiveness versus the noise that they're going to generate for the life of the tyre. Consider that um, you know, all tyres are pretty quiet as soon as you put them on. Once they've got 10,000 Ks on them, it's a very different story. And then also what their performance is like in the wet, which is sort of a, uh, it's a combination of all of the above. So have a solid think about whether it's a daily or dedicated tyre, how much time do you actually spend off-road really, and what's your budget, and then make your choice out of, you know, not just these tyres, there's lots of good tyres on the market, but these are sort of a good array of examples um, that you can choose from. There's some truck noise as well to finish off the video, but um, thanks very much for tuning into this one. Um, sort of one that I've been meaning to make for a while because we do get a lot of those questions, but um, hopefully that was of interest to you and uh, you might get some benefit out of it. Let me know actually if you've got any more questions down below because you never know, we might remake this or uh, answer your questions or it's always good to get involved in banter as well. So thanks for tuning in. Thank <laughs> you.